Welcome back. In this educational video, we'll be exploring the fascinating world of network security and penetration testing. Join us as we delve into the powerful capabilities of Nmap, a popular network scanning tool to gain valuable insights into services running on a remote host. We'll also demonstrate the execution of a reverse shell payload in Groovy on Jenkins, a popular automation server, and showcase the use of Netcat to navigate through the files and retrieve the hidden flag. It's important to note that this video is solely intended for educational purposes and does not endorse or encourage any illegal activities. During our intro, as usual, I've taken the liberty of setting up our environment. Um, our host is up and running and we've initialized an Nmap scam using the SC flag to enable the default scripts and SV to enable the version detection for some advanced reconnaissance. While our Nmap scam is in progress, let's take a moment to address some questions on the educational portal. You might have come across the term CVE before, but what does it exactly mean? Well, CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. It's a system used to uniquely identify and track down known vulnerabilities in software and hardware. By understanding CVEs, we can stay vigilant and proactive in securing our systems against potential threats. So the answer to this question is Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. Moving on to the next question, you might be wondering what exactly does CIA stand for in this context? Well, CIA stands for Confidentiality, Integrity and Availability, the three pillars of information security. Confidentiality ensures that the information is accessible only to authorized individuals or systems, preventing unauthorized disclosure. Integrity focuses on maintaining the accuracy, consistency and trustworthiness of the data throughout its life cycle, guarding against unauthorized modifications. Availability ensures that the systems and information are accessible and usable by authorized parties whenever needed, avoiding disruptions and downtime. For our task 3, let's uh, utilize the valuable information we obtained from our Nmap scan. We can conveniently refer to the scan output and copy-paste the version we discovered. Now let's tackle the next question and retrieve the version of Jenkins. I must admit, this part had me scratching my head for a while. I tried some default passwords myself and also like browsed the internet for clues, but it turns out that Jenkins generates a unique password and stores it on the system itself. Feeling a bit stuck, I decided to seek guidance from the walkthrough and I managed to retrieve the password from there, which is root for the username and password as the actual password. Moving forward, if we take a peek at the bottom right corner, we can spot the version of Jenkins the system is running. So all we just need to do is grab this juicy piece of information and paste it into task 4. And now over to the next question. To answer this one, we can refer to the Jenkins portal, and as we can see here, it allows Groovy script, so I'm just going to insert Groovy. For the sixth question, in Windows, uh, this will use cmd.exe, should we decide to run a Groovy script. Moving on to the next question, if config should be used for this one, as it matches the expected answer here on screen. But you can also use IP ADDR. I will be showcasing this command in a few moments. As we progress to task 8, we can rely on the helpful guidance provided by Netcat itself. Um, the dash U flag should be specified in this case, as shown in its own help section. And finally, for the thrilling task 9, the term that describes initiating a connection from a target host back to the attacker is none other than reverse shell. And now on to the final quest to retrieve the elusive flag. To achieve this, we'll harness the power of Groovy scripting language. As hinted by the intriguing questions we've just answered, we'll embark on the epic journey of establishing a reverse shell. I have logged on the internet and retrieved the code from this GitHub page. Now we just need to modify it to our needs. Before we proceed, let's retrieve my IP address, which we cleverly hinted at earlier stages. Remember that IP address command that I mentioned, it's time to put it to good use. Armed with this IP address, we'll update our groovy reverse shell command, and let's not forget to specify the port we'll be using for our trusty companion netcat. Since this machine runs on Linux, we'll tweak the string command to 
slash bin slash bash to ensure smooth execution within this shell. With all the preparations in place, it's time to kick things up into high gear. We'll start up netcat by using the powerful flags of L for listening, V for verbose, N for preventing the NS resolution, and P to specify the port. Now let's head back to the Jenkins portal and run the command that will change everything. Once we run the command, the connection has been established as we can see here. Not only that, but as we can witness, the service is also running as root. As we are making our way through this video, I want to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude. Your support means the world to me, and if you found this information useful, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and like this video. And don't forget to leave a comment down below, sharing your thoughts, suggestions for future videos, or any burning questions that you might have. And now it's time to unveil the solution for our final task. In scenarios like these, the flag tends to hide in the depths of the root directory. And it seems like this challenge is no different. Now that we have located the flag, we can use the cat command to display its contents, and then copy paste and submit the flag to the hack the box portal. With this task now complete, we reach the end of this journey. I hope this educational adventure has been a thrilling one for you, and thank you for joining me on this quest. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning.